all jokes aside, no, no exaggeration. Uh, we're on French Road between Mac and, and Canfield. Canfield. This, this is French itself, right? This is French Road. Um, on the east side of Detroit, and we were estimating that Tim and Eddie Jackson Jr., this is Courtney Brown Jr., uh, he initially estimated 20 million, and then we were doing the math, and we were like, no, more like 100 million gross, that's not profit, but they probably, their different crews over that 20 year stretch probably counted a hundred million dollars. hundred million, we touched, a, yeah, we touched on so, that. So where are we at? How did, this is not the house, it's a vacant lot uh, next door. 3875 was the address. 3875 French Road. Um, tell us the story of, so it's, your dad gets out in 84, the cocaine run starts. What's going on in the streets and in your guys' family to get this place going? And, and Go, I want you guys, I got the info card right there where we talk about 277 Geneva, which was an earlier building, which weirdly enough is where my father grew up <laughs> at, and I grew up two blocks away in Highland Park on Hamilton. So we talked about that. That's the early to mid-80s. Right. So how does this this block on French Road get going? Actually, it goes back to uh, Geneva. So Eddie and them big run, that 18 months after his father gets out, um, 83 to 85, they light up the city with Wakefield, with Pep, that whole deal, right? So they catch the indictment. Eddie relocate to Geneva. He started hustling. Demetrius helped him out financially a lot. Then eventually Demetrius gave him a bag to start working about 86. 86, 87. What, what did he give? How much? A couple of keys or something? You know, he started them off because Eddie was still. Oh, but you guys had one of the first, like, $20 rock spots at that two. At, at Geneva. Geneva. We had banged Geneva. It just, yeah, had been stupid. Um, and then Pops is doing good because we got the thing coming out to Bahamas, and that's like 86 to 89. And how much volume was that? Pops is bringing in about. 10 keys a week from the Bahamas. So he could have probably done more, but he was breaking it down, right? Yeah, he was breaking it down to him and Fat Frank, and then... Um, were they cooking it or was powder there? They were cooking it. They was cooking it. They was cooking it. And so what, what back, do you remember, like, what, was any cut put on it? Was it turned, was it cooked right? No, if you remember 87, man, Love that's 12, when the yeah. streets was flooded, and okay. the price was, you know, the price of keys, because we was getting them for 13, 13, 5. And that wasn't them. that much cheaper than what they were going for. It wasn't. You could, even at 13, 13, 5, you could only still make about 1,000. 2,000 tops. I mean, wholesale, yeah. Wholesale. But I, Pops never liked I, wholesaling, though. Yeah. It never made any, to him or me, it never made any sense to me to handle that kind of volume and only be making 20%. Especially when it's 650 grams to get your life no parole. And then they came out with that crazy law, right? Okay, so this so, place happens how? So Eddie gets burnt out. I mean, literally, him and the cat and mouse game with the Highland Park Police Department. <laughs> Shout out to Yap. Shout out to Ponytail. Ponytail. Quaker. That whole crew. They just didn't had it with Eddie. Well, and didn't they, Yap become the mayor? Yap became the mayor. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, my rapper friend's uh, male relative feels that Ponytail. In the, in the driveway of his one of his relatives like really yeah. wow for pay for the pay pay well them uh, they was horrible they i mean that summer but without getting all distracted but yeah they used to come by geneva and harass us take our money take our jewelry and shit now the money was all turned into evidence right <laughs> you know what we didn't go follow up to forfeiture laws and they never get sent us any paperwork. Any paperwork. And they didn't paper come in the mail. And didn't, nothing came in the mail. <laughs> so, cat and mouse game. I'm in New York. After I moved to New York in '87, Eddie's still doing his thing on Highland Park. I'm helping Pop get the money to back to the Bahamas. '87, '88, '89. Eddie's still doing his thing in Highland Park. Finally, Highland Park. Yop Quaker Pony telling them tell Eddie basically. We tired of playing this game with you. Every time we see you, we pulling you over. Literally. Told them it's over. We're not going to play this cat and mouse game. You know, they've been running, raiding, running, raiding, running, raiding. 
in 89, my pops gets violated because he didn't got heat from this Bahamas thing. Parole violation. Parole violation. We got infiltrated. Broad, we were serving. We did some sideways shit on our own out in D.C. Feds pop her. She about to tell on everybody. Now, the rule of the game, rule of the game. She don't tell on us, but she know the plug down in the islands, right? We, she was someone that met him obviously through you. Yeah. For you guys. Yep. And um, so Pops, like, you fucked up. I got to tell my people that our shit didn't get raggedy up here. Because he old school like that. So he just told a told boy the truth. He like, leave it's over. Alone. Leave us alone. We fucked up. Yeah. I can tell you we got, we've been, my, we got infiltrated. We got problems internally. And you need to leave us alone. And, um. Then right behind all that shit. How did he, avo- did he get violated or no? He, so behind that shit, they run, they raid his apartment on six months. Oh, that's when he got the gun case. And that's he did when like he a year or two. 18 months. And then he gets out. Right, but that's the 18 month period that lead to French Road. So, cause you got now Eddie old man locked up. He been banned from Highland Park. My pops didn't got locked up. I moved back from New York. And me and him clicked back. Where you had been money laundering. Where I had been money laundering, getting the money down to the islands. And me and him clicked back up. And he like, Junior, we kind of fucked up. Now, we ain't been in this situation since we was kids. Both our parents, both our daddies locked back up. Mom had just got the legitimate business going, so it wasn't making enough money to survive us with the lifestyle. You had grown accustomed. That we had grown accustomed to. So Eddie said, you know, Junior, um, I think we can set up shop over there at my cousins and them on French Road. I said, where well, you used to go, um, where you and the HUD used to go and buy Mescaline at? He like, yeah, Dennis. Shout out to Dennis Richardson. Shout out to Kurt Richardson, Alvin Richardson, Wani Plu, Back Jesus, Giggle Rock. He say, um, I think we can set up over there. But I'm like, we ain't got no work. Shout out to the big homie. We got a dear close friend of ours. Knew the situation we was in, knew both our daddies were sitting down. And he, he cut into us. We didn't even cut into him. It used to be a different time in the streets. And he was like, check this out. I know y'all a little fucked up right now. Why don't you take this half a break? Just see. Of H. No, no. Oh, cocaine. Cocaine. Okay. Cocaine. And see if y'all can get something going. We come over here. Now this is the east side of Detroit. Mac and Bewick, three blocks away. It's 20 established bags already over here and it, walking distance walking distance and i mean it was slow slow what too much set, like uh dimes we selling dimes okay. we selling dimes and i have to be honest you know this is that benzo cane that just came out and i helped make it even slower because eddie asked me you want to blow up you know them big balloon rocks he like you want to put that benzo on there and he was against it. He was like, man, we just, you know, we quality guys, Junior. We quality guys. But you wanted to blow it up. But my greed, my greed got the best of me. I was like, man, fuck this. We got to make a name. We need, a, we need some bold as big as they shoulders. Bold as for your shoulders. Problem is the shit got, I, we took some great shit that uh, Big Homie had gave us and turned it into garbage. Fucking with that Benzo. And that killed the reputation of the spot. Mm. Then we got to go recook off all the Benzo off the shit. <laughs> get some more work from Big Homie. Recook all this shit again. We just going backwards. It's a science project. It's a science project and we going backwards. <laughs> and we going backwards 100 miles per hour. Finally, we get a decent thing going, man, but it's just slow. I mean, when I say slow, we doing like $300, $400 a day. Oh, that's not even. It ain't about it. Yeah, we spent the money food, eating. Yeah. We spending the money eating. And um, I said, man, you know, after about two months of that shit, I say, Jack, that's a call Eddie Jr. I say, Jack, man, this shit ain't, it ain't enough for both of us, man. I was like, I'm going to go do something else. So it didn't, two months in, is you still at under 500 bucks? Still day? under 500 a day. I mean, we had some glimpses of hope it might do 350, four. Um, but people, it's, um, it's, again, it's the east side. It's just a lot of competition that's been and over there here. And there was no, vi- like, no one had a problem with you setting up, or you weren't <laughs> making enough money to? No, he just reminded a good story. So some young enterprising guy who was hustling at the end of the block, he came down here, and he didn't know who he was, right? And he come down here all gorilla style. Me and Eddie on the porch, and he just going to stop in front of the spot and start talking crazy. 
Y'all can't be rolling over here on French Road. This is my motherfucking block. Now, I'm looking, because I know how Eddie is. I'm definitely, like father, like son, I'm definitely the more mild-mannered, because I'm just, like, thinking to myself, nigga, you're going to get hurt. Because if you was about anything, you wouldn't be doing all this talking. This is what I'm thinking to myself. Eddie look at me, I look at him. Eddie step off the porch and step the boy. He said, let me tell you one motherfucking thing, nigga. We hustle where we stand. You need to ask somebody. Don't you ever come back to this house again. Old boy came with the rah-rah. All right, all right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be back. And I guess he asked around. That nigga came back the next day talking about, hey, man, you know, that shit was a real misunderstanding, man. That shit was a real misunderstanding. We good? I think we end up giving that nigga back later on down the road once we got established. He ended up working with us. But, yeah, so he was the only really. But, yeah, we weren't making enough money to bother yeah, yeah. nobody who was about something. Yeah. And um, I went off, man, actually squared up, got a little powder hustle going, got a gig. Squared at, up means a job. A job. A job. It's because you had a college degree. College degree, you know, and a good resume. You know, I'd ran some big shit in New York. Upstanding young gentleman. Upstanding young gentleman. Yeah, because, you know, mom always insisted that I work. Hey, as she should. Right, because she would be like, even though the allowance, I literally for a lot yeah, of years. Too much for a young man with all free time and money in his pocket is. She knew that was a disaster. Vast. Recipe for disaster. Fast. And that at least since his old, his old man's given him. Three thousand dollar a week allowance. The hell did you do with all oh, drugs? Drugs and women. Yeah, that's a lot Lifestyle. of money back then. That's like plus back you then. were making your own money. Plus I'm making, plus I'm working. That he needed some. So, but to keep the story moving, Eddie, you know, to his credit, when I tell him right here, literally we're standing right there, and I tell him, man, I'm gonna go on the square up. I can get me a good thing. They're gonna let I can run this restaurant because I already started putting in some applications. I was like, I got a good thing. They they willing to hook me up out of the Marriott. Out in Troy on Big Beaver. I was running the seafood restaurant out there. Oh, that became, what's it now? Um, oh, now it was it's Shula's. Then? Before it was Shula's. Oh. You're thinking about it, it became Shula's. Before that, it was called Stacy's. Oh. It was internally ran by the Marriott. Oh. And, um, and we had the NBA contracts. So it was a good deal. I got to meet Jordan and all kinds of people. Barkley, because they had the NBA and NFL contract at the Marriott. But anyway, so Eddie tell me, man, you should hang in there, Junior. It's going to get better. It's going to get better. I say, man, it just ain't enough for both of us, man. I was like, you, you'll figure it out. You're a hustler. You'll figure it out. I'm like, and I did. I believed he would figure it out. I didn't know it would all. Un I didn't know that I was about to walk away from a 50-50 partnership on a spot that over the next 20 years was going to gross $100 million. I did not know that that's what I was. Wa Perseverance. So I, I, I go off to the Marriott. I ain't lying now. Maybe 90 days later. I'm talking to my man, Rome. He say, so you heard what happened, right? I said, what you mean? He say, uh, they say your man Eddie hooked back up with one of his pop's friend, his cat named Demetrius. And he done put him back in the box. What I had, year would this have been? This would have been 91. Oh, so this was right towards, right before Demetrius Just gets killed. killed. Maybe he rolled with Demetrius strong on that run about six months. And then Demetrius. And Demetrius got killed. Um... And so once D, so I done walked away now. I come running back to French Road. I'm like, for real, homie? Street's talking. What you gonna do for your man? I, said, I ain't no bullshit. I just pulled up. I just, I can remember like yesterday. I pull up here. How long he, did you last at the Marriott? About 11 months. Oh, okay. I, that was good, right? Yeah, for you. That, that was good. Yeah, proud of you. <laughs> that was good. Um, I pull back up on the spot. I'm like, Eddie ain't told me you'd hook back up with D. He like, yeah, yeah, Junior. So I didn't even have to ask. He was like, what you want, man? Just let's cut to the chase. What you want? I was like, man, I ain't really been doing nothing. Just give me an AFI, man. He was like, bet. Come back. Come back in an hour. I got you. And he did. And what'd you do with that? You sold it? Oh, you were selling powder? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Out at the hotel? Or yeah. Just around? At the, mostly, mostly the hotel, but you know, I know people. Yeah. Partiers, no partiers. Yeah. And I was sniffing enough of this shit. I, you know. It, <laughs> Um, but so Demetrius, you know, and Eddie started making these fucking dimes that were the size of golf balls with that Demetrius plug. I mean, he, so he was doing with Demetrius ten, fifteen thousand $15,000 a day in dimes. Now, when yeah. something has that volume of traffic, it's not uh, 200 crackheads spending $50. I mean, it's a lot of 
people doing double ups, drug dealers coming and spending four or five hundred dollars, right? It was a hustler's. It was a simple hustler's dream because again, he put out dimes to size. Could you come and buy a dime? You could come and buy a dime. But that would have just been neighbor. It was a most of the business was people buying. Me Al. Oh, oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, take my number. See, we just live on the block here. This is what it goes. Two, one, three. Okay. Yep. It's real in the D when you're with a celebrity. Two celebrities. Two. <laughs> now, the question is, what does that young gentleman want to do? It doesn't involve a Rico violation. <laughs> Uh, you ex we escaped to Rico. Why throw everything away over ego? Right. <laughs> okay, so it's it's ninety one. He's doing 91, fifteen grand a 50 day in dimes. And but it's like I say, most of it, because well, the dimes are so big. So I mean, when I say golf days. balls, it ain't much exaggeration. So people buying them, splitting them, cutting them, taking them back to the West Side, taking them back to Grand Rapids or wherever, oh, yeah, selling yeah. them for fifties and sixties, all of that type of shit. It's going down. So now all of a sudden I just can't leave Troy without coming to French Road because the action is here. And Eddie, you know, one thing I say about Eddie, anybody who hustled with him, been around him, you know, he got that from his father, honest. When his bag is, when his pocket's right, he's a very generous person. So we back living the lifestyle that we're accustomed to. Um, six months later, the tragedy strikes. Oh, Demetrius. Demetrius. So uh, let's pause there for a second. So. Uh, without getting too sidetracked, I mean, Demetrius fell victim in that whole, well, <laughs> we won't get into what probably it really mean, was his demise because no one's been, well, the Milton brother, but then. It's but, still shade, so, still foggy, right? So best friends is running around. White boy Rick, Rick is, is running getting around. knocked. Maserati, like this. Big is, Ed Hanson, in fact. Oh, Ed is still we out. We still, because Ed is. The, the war was Ed and, and Demetrius. All that's going down. Because so that's when Pops meets Ed. Well, oh, Pop and Ed jail. in jail, but they had met over on Evergreen. But anyway, so how, same how, circle. How did you, how did Eddie not get, I mean, was the violence really about the drugs and the money or was it with just drug dealers who had personal problems with each other? Like, how were you guys not sucked in any violence? I mean, well, one, okay, so Eddie hustling with Demetrius. Demetrius, Eddie's man. Ed Hansen and my cousins, mm. Lala and them are doing Oh, he, Big, they're actually... We, they in business. Oh. And okay. and we didn't know to after the fact. Sometime we was copping from Ed, and sometime they was getting shit from us. So, you know, I'd be trying to explain this. I think it's what your man Cavario was saying, too. When you second generation in this shit, a lot of shit that people... You know to stay away from the nigga shit, man. For real. You see it a mile away. He's making money. You know there's about to be a bunch of bullshit, a bunch of killing... And you just already instinctively know we need to distance ourselves. We're going to be cool. I was telling big homie, big fella over there. Um, we ain't never got into no shit with nobody. That's why we sit outside on Fritz Road right now, 20 years later. Yeah. In it, because we knew to stay in, stay in our lane and be cool with everybody. Because the bag, as we were saying, the money was right. So if the money right, and we, you know, both was raised. And you ain't going to take nothing from me. As long as you ain't trying to take nothing from me, you can talk as crazy as you want. We ain't, we not, we not gangsters, we hustlers. Which means. Who can get gangsters? Who can get, we're going to protect our interests. You know what I mean? Yeah. But ain't no, I ain't never, I ain't never. There's some feelers around here you might have had to get gangster. I mean. I can say, because I ain't never even tried to pretend to be a tough guy. I just came up that you know as long as you don't bother us why would we gotta be talking about security at a spot like that was there a rock or a stick or just it wasn't set up to where somebody well later we get one it was the one stick up attempt which we'll get to oh, which was an attempt to stick up yeah. that actually happened years years after the spot so demetrius gets killed demetrius gets killed all fucked up um and dad isn't locked up at this point Demetrius gets killed because dad finds out about Demetrius why he locked up. Okay. He in Springfield. He so in Springfield, not, Missouri. So nothing's going on. Nothing's going on. Um, in fact, I get so distraught with the situation. I'm like, fuck it, I do better. I can go back to New York and get a six-figure gig. Mm. Fuck it. Oh, because you had been managing the Gap in Harlem? Oh, all that, yeah, yeah. And Pops now is down to about six months. 
before he getting so out. You're just gonna buy I'm just calm, I'm just calm down. And you know, pop gonna figure gonna out. Pop gonna figure out. For pop figure it out. We'd be able to get back. You know, his network much bigger than mine and Eddie's. You know, and we'd be able to get once pop come home. Oh, yeah, that was that was all everybody used back in the day. As soon as Pop get home, when Pop get home, things get a lot better. So I go back to New York. Um, so that's '91. Eddie starts coming to New York to get a bag. Mm. Got it. You heard us talk about another Big Ed, not Big Ed Hanson, Big Head from New York. Shout out to Big Ed from the Bronx. Ran a nightclub, Indigo Blues. that had all the comedians. Cheryl Underwood, T.K. Kirkland, J.B. Smooth, Mike Epps. All the ones that we would end up bringing to bring into the Cotillion Club. We run into them in New York. So I'm living in the Dominican neighborhood. Eddie Stark coming to New York. I introduced him to some of the Dominicans I'd have met. Plus we got a brother out the Bronx. Shout out to Money Walt down in Florida. Um, Money Walt had hooked us up with a brother from the Bronx. He was plugged into a big Dominican, Puerto Rican uh, clique. So Eddie Coppin from the Dominicans and from Big Ed running the shit back to French Road. I'm living in New York. Pop come home, he hook up with the Nigerians. He sat down while he in Springfield. Mm. More. Oh, before the Pakistanis, he had some Nigerians. The Nigerian, Ota. Shout out to the big brother, Ota, uh, from the motherland. So he come out, they got a good bag, it ain't a great bag, but we eating, we eating. So, 92, the famed Chicago situation, now fast forward, we're in 92. So then we just did a story about that, his father was told by a Pakistani friend of his that an Iranian friend of his had 10 kilos of untouched premium Turkish heroin sitting in suitcases in a hotel, or it's in somewhere in Chicago that yeah. they were afraid that might be being watched. They went and kind of staked it out. Nothing, didn't see any surveillance, picked it up, boom. Boom, pop, pop on. Ten. And at this point, this is a crack house. At this point, it's a crack house. Ain't no heroin been sold. Ain't no heroin been sold. But that's all about to change. It's all about to change, because for about six months now, Pops is coming to New York, Eddie's still running back and forth. They hooking up, but they ain't doing no business. Because Eddie got this cocaine thing going, and he's in his own world. And I'm telling him, and Pop's telling him, dude, you're tripping. We got a good bag. So he, oh, Pop, he's refer- he don't even want he don't, He's like, man, I'm just doing cane, I'm just doing cane, I'm just doing cane. We tell him, it's Fat Frank knocking him. Because di- the- heroin's a little more of a ha- like It a is a hassle. Yeah. It is a hassle. So Eddie's making easier. Craig, you could have cooked. Cook it up, cut Cook it up, up, it sits, whatever. You ain't got the mix. You ain't got to worry about the right mix. You, again, it's the east side of Detroit, so when you come they with, a, with a... But you got to come with the right blow because there's a lot of blows on the oh, na- yeah, in the neighborhood. Yeah. So it's you got it's an operation. Right. So uh, anybody who saw um, Why Didn't Eddie Listen to the Plug, a post we did. Eddie gets robbed in New York. Mm. The Plug, um, the Colombians, Pablo and Crazy had told us don't ever come on the block if crazy. we ain't crazy, because crazy is crazy in my hand. That was the one I told you, Santa, the Santa, made us do the Santa Maria test. Oh, Santa Muerte. Yeah, we went to the spot through a friend unannounced, and he f- crazy freaks out. Because they was like, there's a big weight spot. Like, they kept 50 bricks mm. there. And we show up, two black guys unannounced on 127th and Lenox. Oh, that's Harlem. Harlem. It's not even Washington Heights. That's what our man, our Dominican man, shout out to Kid Cuba and, and that crew. He tell us. That's how he hooked us to go. Because we used to just, he used to serve us right there. I was at 106 in Manhattan. He was at 107 in Manhattan. They owned the bodega. And we used to do the deal there. But he said, he didn't have nothing. And he said, go up see my people. And we like, we ain't going over. He said, and that was his line. He says, 127 in Lenox. It's Black Harlem. It's your people. Y'all going to be good. Eddie being Eddie, he like, fuck it. What I, were you, well, how much money did you have? Like, what were you trying to buy? Just a brick. Just a brick. Just a brick. Yeah. Yeah. What was that going for then in New York? 14 or something? Like 18. Like 18. On the street, though. Yeah. You're well, just we, walking up. Like, yeah, hey, just, we, we got 18. Let's let get me get one. Yeah. And um, I'm like, Eddie, you about, every time, Eddie, Jr., like, and I'm thinking to myself, you're about to get me killed. Why does this guy always put me in life-threatening positions? You know? But anyway, we go up to the spot. 
on 127th and Lennox. Soon as we walk in, the big fellas, Pablo and Crazy, they looking at our man Kid Cuba like, are you crazy bringing these two niggas here? And they just, everybody starts speaking Spanish and freaking out and everybody start moving and I'm thinking to myself, this isn't good. Whether we go to heaven or hell, Eddie, I'm killing you after you get me killed. Because I'm just really, I'm like, I'm telling all jokes aside, I ain't going to even lie, I was scared as fuck. Because I'm really thinking to myself, 50-50 chance. Oh, wow. I, I gave us, at that point when they all freaked out, I was like, we got about a 50-50 chance of walking out of here. So crazy then say, he, he look at the big boss, Pablo. Oh, and this is your first. You, you didn't know them. Did not know these guys from Adam House Cat. He said we gotta, he got to go talk to the spirits. He started lighting the candles, pulling out the cards, steaming up the mirror. I mean, this whole I thing. I mean, was he afraid you were the police? That's what, he was, that's what he told us. He said he had to go talk to the spirits to find out if we was the police. Now, we all know what the outcome was going to be if the spirits had gave him oh, bad. they would have killed two police, who they thought to be police officers? Oh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, we weren't leaving there. We wouldn't leave. No, they was they was mad at the motherfucker about that man. They was mad at they man Cuba for bringing us up there for real, for real. Like you have compromised all security just so you can make fifteen hundred dollars for real. So I don't know if they was more mad at him than they was at us. Yeah. But we was we was gonna you be was the gonna collateral. Be the we was gonna be the collateral damage. Yeah. For his zealousness. But the spirits told crazy that we was actually righteous guys just trying to make some money and do good business. And he came back and told Pablo, he said, oh, Poppy good, Poppy good, Poppy good. Negro, Negro Poppy good. Negro Poppy good. Wow. Negro Poppy, Velico mucho. Negro Poppy good. That's all I remember. Your, your new nickname, Negro Poppy. Negro Poppy. Negro Poppy good. <laughs> they served Eddie. They gave him the brick. Told him, we got you. And then ain't nothing, but they gave him one thing. They said, if we ain't here, don't do business. Pop, the big guy tells Eddie, it looked like it's all this money and dope around here. If it ain't me, if it ain't crazy, don't, don't do it. Mm. They got a nice little run going. Eddie Rutt hustling with them for about four months. Business is good. They had a right. They should bringing it all back to Detroit. I ain't lying. He had to, he, he, Eddie didn't spoke about it. He had to put 28 in, 30 come back. Tavario was explaining actually the... Um, oh, because it sucks in the little bacon soda. So the, yeah, and the, if, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, the shit was coming back 30. He happy as can be. He come to New York to cop. Pablo oh, it was like that Cali cartel cocaine. It was almost like it was like meant to cook in the crack. Yeah, yes. It was meant. It wasn't even for snorting. It, yes, exactly. It's kind of gummy or whatever. Yeah. Um, Pablo and Crazy ain't around. I had just had foot surgery, so that's why I didn't go with him to cop. And when he left my place in Brooklyn, he had been gone. This shit normally takes 45 minutes. The whole process to leave my place in downtown Brooklyn, go uptown, cop, and come back was 90 minute deal. After him, and God rest his soul, my brother 250. 250 was Eddie's driver, wingman, partner, our beloved friend that just passed. 250 and Eddie leave, they've been gone about three hours. I'm telling my man LB, because he see my face all fucked up. Because I know only two things have happened. Arrest or... My friend's in jail, or they, they might be out of here. They might be out of here. This is the real shit, fellas, family. This is the real shit. This ain't shit. the glamorous This part. ain't the glamorous part, because I'm sitting on the couch, Foot in the cast, like, damn, our friend's dead. Because when shit goes south, it goes south. Oh, yeah. Shit goes sideways, it goes sideways. About four hours later, Eddie come in. He got a fucked up look on his face. They're like, man, they got me. He, served, he gave his money to one of their underlings. They spun him for four hours talking about Pablo and Crazy will be here. Finally, they come give him the brick. As soon as he walk out the apartment building on 127th, Oh, they had to stick a man, come stick him up. Check. So they could tell the boss, well, we technically we served we him. Did, we served him. It was somebody else on the block, peeped the, peep the move, wasn't us. He said, as soon as he walk out, they boom, nigga don't make me do it. He know. All that brave shit. I don't be knowing, like, I ain't never, I done had a gun to my head two times in my life. And both times, I gave the niggas the shit so quick, they were scared. Man, you can have all this shit. Is you crazy? We're not gonna talk, we ain't gonna negotiate, it's yours. You need a big he need a big he need a big man. Anyway, Eddie just tossed the brick up in the air and took off running. They they took the brick. So now he fucked up. Now he's willing to listen to me and Pops. 
Jones, right? So he come back, his bankroll fucked up. He cut, I'm still in New York. He cut into my father and say, um, Berman, you say that uh, you working with a good bag. And my pops like, nigga, I've been telling you for damn near eight months now, I got that thing. You just keep running back and forth. He's like, anyway, take these 10 bundles over to your spot. See what you can get going. That's a thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. Ten packs of ten dimes. And he sold the ten bundles in about thirty-two minutes. He come running back. Pops gave him fifty bundles. He finished that that day. So first day, the spot does six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars out the gate. He 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 plateaued it to ten thousand a day within two weeks. And within a month, he doing 25, 30. Justin Harrell. For, Justin Harrell. He makes so much money, God rest his soul. Paul McDaniels lived on the other side of the street. We would end up setting up over there. Eddie gave up the cocaine business. He started making so much money with Pops. Because first of the money, he might do 50000 a day. First through the third. The, the markup on the, on the heroin was more. Now, see, this is he getting most favorite status. Those who know the story know Eddie Jr.'s father put my father in the game. My father was his father's number two man and looked out and forever the Brown family will be in debt to what the big man did because he completely changed the trajectory of, um, of our lives, right? So Pops, like, this is my chance to pay back my friend. Eddie's sitting down right now. Eddie's still in jail. So he putting a 15 on it. He's putting a 15 on it and still selling it. So he's taking one key, turning it into 15 keys, right? He's wholesaling the same thing that he's putting a 15 on it. For the price he paid for it. For the, that's right. But for Eddie Jr., they would hook up the same shit we were selling wholesale, and he was making up these packs, bundles, for Eddie. He was putting a half a gram in each pack. So a dot. Oh. So normally... You need dollar grams of heroin? Oh, no one. So everyone's coming. So if you're selling heroin, you just come here and just... It went, it went bananas. He's so giving out a half a gram. 50. He's giving out a half a gram. One gram's like a hundred dollars. Right yes, now? and he's giving out a half a gram for ten dollars. And then Eddie only got turning five on each half a gram. He told Eddie Jr., "Man, just tell your daddy what we doing." We said, "Let's split it down the middle, man. We're gonna just split it down the middle. If you do, if you do forty thousand a day, we split it down the middle." He, same thing his father told him when he, my father went to tell him Eddie what he couldn't afford. And Eddie just said, well, look, man, we partners then. Now can you afford it? Mm. And he's like, and that was it. They just split the bag. We do all the hookup. Shout out to Shauna. Shout out to Trina. Shout out to Terrell. Shout out to Rhonda, the whole hookup team. Um, over there on Burt Road. Oh. It was a long drive. Yeah, that's Deep right, West. Right. Yeah, that's where my pops live at. Yeah, that's yeah, deep, Burt. Burt Road. And then, but you could like, hop right on 96 six. and take it to 94 and come up right there. And the um, Detroit Freeway game. And that lasted, man, that Pakistani run. In fact, the lick got so good, that's what led to me opening up the store on 125th Street. I got a loft in Harlem, high rise downtown Brooklyn. Um, we ended up buying the club on Puritan, started bringing in acts. When you're at that volume, do you, I know when you mix heroin like that, it falls, to use the term. So did, did seven days a week, it had to be mixed, or like twice a week, or? Again, this all documented. All them people I just shouted out that was on the hookup team, Trina, Shauna, Terrell, Rhonda, they couldn't keep up. They it couldn't. It wasn't date, or was it, it was all, they were we all. We literally could not Oh, so it keep was every. Pop. Five, six, seven days a Norm, week. Sometimes Pop and Eddie and 50 with the rest of the hookup team were literally 50 all. 50 is Steve, is Steve. No, no, no. I'm oh, talking about 250. Oh, 250. Okay. Big Steve, Big That's Five going to come in later. We'll, we'll let him tell that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, five, five had his, Five Bag had a, shout out to Five, Big Steve. Five helped out too, but they would come, you know, the network. You know, now I give all the hustlers in Detroit that was in our circle credit. So Whenever we put out the- was going on and you had this going on. And we had this going on. And, and then we had it? CT, he was moving weight. All right, let's, let's cut. All right. And then we can maybe we'll change.